All right, thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Nitsan Shapira. I'm uh, one of the founders and the CEO of Epsagon. I'm based in New York City, in Manhattan, in our office actually, which is uh, being used uh, right now. Um, I'm gonna talk about the scale effect, uh, which is what do we do when we have uh, very high scale, very, very complex systems, and how do we visualize microservice based systems uh, in order to understand them better to monitor and troubleshoot issues there a little bit about me um, i'm a, a software engineer in my background uh, i've been i spend a lot of time in the israeli intelligence uh, unit uh, in the last three years i'm uh, working in epsagon a company which i founded together with uh, ron ribbons after my co-founder and cto i moved to new york in the beginning of this year uh, that's my Twitter handle, and uh, I travel to over 40 countries. This is a photo from Japan. Um, and let's start. So we're going to talk about the architectures of yesteryear. So what we used to have, and then what we have today, which is what we call a visualization hell, uh, and the troubles that can come when you go into those microservices, those distributed complex environments. And then how do you troubleshoot problems there, especially in production where the cost of downtime can be very high and what tools do we have for tracing and visualizing those architectures uh, that are so complex? So what we used to have is something that I believe most of you are familiar with, which is the monolithic design pattern. So you would have uh, the infrastructure and then you have uh, basically a piece of code on top of the server, which is the monolithic application. And that was about it. So that was, uh, much, much more simple than what we have today, especially in cloud environments. And, you know, the benefits of having uh, this simple or simpler architecture is, you know, it's very simple. You can very easily understand what's happening, where did you deploy, how to monitor this thing. Uh, it's very clear to see, you know, what, what scale means. So it's only, you know, more compute power, power to the server usually. And again, very straightforward. However, there is a reason the world has gone into microservices. And what happened is that across, you know, uh, some period of time, and especially today, organizations are moving their workloads from their own data centers to the cloud. And at the same time, from just running monolithic applications on top of servers to building much more complex environments that comprise and basically dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of services and technologies communicating with, with one another via APIs, via asynchronous events, multiple programming languages. And today you have services such as AWS Lambda that even allow you to run your ser service without even uh, accessing the host at all. So all you care about is your service, your code, and that's it. So this is a pretty massive leap because you suddenly not deal with the infrastructure anymore, but you actually deal with a service that can comprise thousands of services and you still need to understand how it impacts your customers, but what problems are there, how do you troubleshoot them effectively and so on. So this is just a pretty famous photo. I believe it's from uh, the Netflix infrastructure or uh, architecture and you can see the amount of communications between services that is uh, just massive. And if you wanna visualize this thing, it doesn't, it's not gonna tell you this much because you know, it just looks like a big uh, furball. So how do, you, how do you actually make sense of what you have in production in those environments? So first of all, <laughs> you have uh, architectures that are, can be actually visualized pretty nicely as you can see here. So this is an example from HSBC. It was presented in uh, AWS Rent. And it's pretty easy to understand what communicates with what. So how do you get to this level of visualization in your production system? So you can actually see what, what is currently running there, what problems are there, and so on. So let's, let's take a step back and think about why do we even want to visualize things? What's the benefit? First of all, troubleshooting. Uh, every minute of downtime, can cost $10,000 according to some benchmarks. And you can think easily about some examples, you know, what happens if the backend of Netflix in the US goes down for one hour, how much money would that be? So you must troubleshoot the problems 
very, very fast. And at the same time, troubleshooting time equals reduced developer velocity. So the faster you can troubleshoot, the faster you can also develop and go to production and ship features. And at the same time, you want to care about, you want to know your customer's experience and want to monitor the service. And visualization is another way to understand that. So you can actually understand by looking at it if it's working properly. And for development purposes as well, once, especially when you have, you know, hundreds of services, every time you make a deployment, something changes and it's very easy to look at the graph of the architecture to see, okay, is this what I'm expecting to see or did something go wrong? So just, these are just some of the benefits you can get by having a strong visualization tool in place. So what do you do when it comes to troubleshooting? What alternatives do you have? So you had some problem, uh, maybe it was an exception in the code, maybe you have a tool like Sentry that handles with the, the error tracking, and you can think like this into your, into your Slack or PagerDuty. Now, basically the main tool you can use today is the logs. So you will go into your log aggregation service and you can try and take a look at what happened in that service, but what about the rest? What about the other dozens or hundreds of services that were involved in that business transaction? So this is how it looks like today from most of the customers we meet. So as you can see, logs are, are being used massively, but they are not necessarily the best uh, choice when it comes to a distributed systems. The problem with logs is that you can't really get context between different logs of different services because each log was written individually and logs are just not built to deal with distributed systems. So the is that especially today when the architectures are getting massive, so you have, let's say, hundreds of microservices, and also you have billions of requests coming into the system, it's almost impossible to make a very strong logging system to actually go ahead and figure out what happened in a matter of minutes, which is typically what you want to do in a production system, uh, instead of hours, for example. So the problem is really in the core of using logs, which is just not the right tool. Uh, so let's talk about maybe a better approach, which is distributed tracing. So distributed tracing is a concept that basically tells you a story in a distributed system in the form of a trace. So a trace is, is like a transaction from end to end that propagates through the system. And if you have a strong distributed tracing solution in place, you can have something that looks much more like a story rather than a bunch of logs, which really can help you accelerate your troubleshooting time. And of course, this also leads to the visualization because you need a distributed tracing solution to be able to visualize a distributed system. It's just necessary. Now, what options do you have to, to have something like this in place? So you use one of the open source frameworks. So open tracing, telemetry, all those things are frameworks, which means they are not a solution, they are not a service. You have to go ahead and implement it yourself in the code. And, and we are actually using those under the hoods in the Epsilon solution, uh, which I'm gonna show some screenshots from. But essentially, if you're a company and you wanna go into tracing, you can start by looking at those frameworks. The problem is that you basically have to tell what's going on in every of the way. So open tracing is just a way to standardize how traces are being uh, formatted and sent, but you still have to, let's say, inject identifiers every step of the way or understand how two events are correlated on your own. And from our experience, it typically, typically takes weeks or months of development time to get even the initial result by using those frameworks. And I didn't even mention the backend you need to set up, digest all those massive traces. So this, this is one option, but it does require a very heavy lifting and maintenance that's really not gonna go away at any point in time because every new service is gonna have to include those frameworks. And this is just an example of how it looks like. You need to basically import uh, the tracer. You need to create what's called a sim. So you basically set up manually those spans. You, you open them, you close them, you add tags. So as you can see, it's very manual and also makes the code a bit, uh, a bit messy. So let's, let's take a different approach. How can we make this easier? How can we make this more automated? Uh, this is, uh, for example, uh, a solution 
by epsilon, obviously, in this example, but this is the result of what you would like to have after you have a distribu distributed tracing solution in place. So this is very different than what you had in the logs example, which is, you know, logs from different services. Here you have an actual distributed trace from end to end, in this case, through two different Lambda functions and multiple services, both AWS services and uh, API to auth zero. And in the right side, you can see information about what happened, not just the latency and the errors, but actually the payloads, the HTTP request response and so on. So this is something that is much more like a story, much easier to understand when you look at it than using something like a log. So this is already a huge advantage uh, over using something like logs. And at the same time, you can always look at the traces that come into your system and do different filters on them, uh, send alerts based on, the, based on the trace. So the use of log is becoming more like an, an extra type of engine you have in the system and you can look at, but the traces can really become the core way to understand the system if you have a strong uh, tracing solution in place. So it pretty much makes the log uh, something that you don't have to rely on anymore. And in real life um, applications, they can actually get pretty complicated. And our own backend, by the way, at Epsilon looks much more complicated than this photo. So being able to visualize it not only gives you kind of a sense of what's going on, it, it can give a lot of confidence when to develop new features because you can easily understand, okay, this is what I have. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can deploy another feature, you can see if the APIs are connecting as you expect them to and so on. And, and as you can see in this example, um, a single service today connects to multiple APIs. So it's, if, even if you deploy the simple Lambda function, this Lambda function can actually trigger multiple business processes in your system. So without this concept, context of traces and just by having something like a log, you basically are pretty blind to what's really going on. And in this case, you can see that, you know, there is a call to auth zero, there is a call to S3, triggers another call and so on. So it really gives you much more context. And of course, when you have a, a good visualization in place, you also say, okay, I wanna focus on a single component and easily see what's going on there, where it might start in something like this. So you can easily zoom in and out and understand exactly what's going on in your system. So think about development, for example, when you develop something, and you can easily see this and then drill down into this kind of views, it gives a lot of support because you immediately know what you have actually running in production. And also we hear a lot that when new developers join the team, it really helps them in the onboarding process because instead of you know showing some kind of a Visio chart from two months ago that is probably 50% outdated, we can just show them this is what we really have. This is literally running right now in production. And, and this is your system, this is what you're gonna be working on. So it's very big benefit. Uh, another thing is to look at latency and performance. So when you have a customer, let's say uh, shopping through an e-commerce website, you wanna make sure they get a, a certain latency because otherwise, uh, you know, researchers show that the conversion uh, drops dramatically. If the latency is above a certain uh, threshold of, of some uh, milliseconds. So just by having uh, this kind of visualization, we can immediately see uh, that you know some errors are you know having six milliseconds latency, or compared to something like seventy, so almost ten x. So in this case, the Stripe API call is actually taking longer than what we have in the system. So we have to make sure it doesn't block the user from purchasing, or that it it still remains beyond uh, below the desired threshold. And, and same things for visualizing it in the waterfall where you can really easily see where you're spending your time and then you can just optimize, you know, instead of using uh, some kind of a Lambda function that may be not the right choice of, of compute for this problem, you can switch to a container, for example, or choose a different API for a certain uh, activity. So to summarize, the, the challenge of this of distributed system is, is only beginning because people are deploying more and more and the complexity is massive and especially in uh, tech companies that are running very fast and enterprise that's going into the digital, 
it's just the beginning. You can have maybe 10 services today, but tomorrow you have 100 and in a year it's going to be 1000. So if you have a strong visualization tool in place, you can just develop with more speed and confidence and solve problems much faster when they arise. So it's really something we found extremely valuable, both for our customers and using internally because we use Epsagon on a daily basis internally. And few words about Epsagon, the whole point is to make these things very easy to use. So it just takes five minutes and, and you can be up and running. So that's really taking the open tracing um, open source framework and making it kind of accessible and automated. So we use it under the hood, but for the user, they don't really have to, to do any manual coding to be up and running. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. So I'm just <clears throat> looking, there doesn't seem to be any uh, questions at this stage, but um, are you going to sit on for a little bit and anyone can kind of ask you questions in the, the QA function, if that's all right? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. So. Uh